So welcome to another video, The One Good Road here. Today I'm going to be giving you a overview or a review on one of the best navigation apps on the Play Store and the App Store. And it's in my humble opinion, OpenStreetMaps and Plus or OSM and is the name of the app. So we're gonna go into one of the top, some of the top features that I find within this app to be, I use it on a daily basis and one of the best features I can think all of the best features I can think of but I highly encourage you to download the app for free and to try it out and see what you think but we're just gonna get straight off into it in no particular order and what I think personally is the best navigation app on the Play Store or even on the App Store. Personally I use this in conjunction also with Google Maps and I like to use Google Maps for different reasons the reason I use OpenStreetMaps is because it's a lot more feature rich on, on, for example, tracking my route. It has, I can use different map layers. I can have slope data, hill shades. I can show a lot of different OpenStreet maps, basically. And I really like the design purely for when I'm off road. So that can mean for mountain biking, it can mean regular cycling, it could be for hiking and maybe even like off-road driving, I guess. But that this, this app has it all. And the main thing that's amazing about it is the price. Now you can use this completely for free if you wanted to, and you then get access to, I think 10 map downloads, if I'm not mistaken. Personally, I used way more than that, so then I had to purchase it. But the purchasing price was only about 10 pounds, I think, or 10 euros for the Plus or Pro edition of OpenStreetMaps and Plus. So that that's why I, I paid for it. And I think it's a really good deal, personally, compared to all the other apps in the navigation apping world, basically. I go into detail, if you're interested, I'm going to compare the different apps that, that are on the market right now and talk about what is the best navigation map mapping system that you can download and use on your phone. It really depends on who you are, but I'm going to go into detail about that soon. But let's get into why I picked OpenStreetMaps and Plus. It's a strange name, but that, that's, that's what it's called. So... Let's go into the top features of, of this app. So one of the main things I like about it is the many different map layers you can apply. So this is the first screen that will come up on, on screen. You will get you will get like your location, which I'm currently just in the south of France, not far from the Pyrenees, the foothills. And what you can do is firstly you can tap in the left corner and you will get the map configuration. Now, at first, it's quite daunting that there are so many options to choose from. So you could literally spend an hour learning the mapping system, this, this whole OpenStreetMaps app. I understand that it's a bit overwhelming with how many features there are in this app, but if you spend time, it's worth it. And trust me, it's, it's, it's really heavy on the features and really worth it. So we can choose from offline vector maps. We can then choose from an assortment of different apps and uh, maps, and we can install more. And there are so many to choose from. It's ridiculous. There's 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 ski maps. There's cycling maps. Um, there's satellite maps from Microsoft and all sorts. And the one I'm using currently is called Waymarked Trails, and it's for hiking. I think there's also a cycling version as well. So if I turn on the transparency mode in here, which is just just forget that I've I've said all that because it's like quite a lot to take in, but let's just say that this is one of the main reasons I use it and once you get on this, you turn it on, you turn the transparency off and it will show all of the maps or all of the routes, should I say? for hiking around Europe. It doesn't even just show that, it also shows all of the ones in America, which as you can see is a lot less, which is interesting. 
So the only downside with this system that I use for finding local trails and, and like national routes is that it's online based. So all of these routes are cached onto my phone right now and I'm not connected to the internet really. I mean, there is a Wi-Fi signal, but it's not very good. So uh, when I go over to other places, it doesn't show um, everything right now, but there are some routes which will pop up slowly that we've got Australia, we've got New Zealand, but just keep in mind, not everything is available offline with this this map I'm overlay I'm showing you. But once you've downloaded a simple cache of the routes, I mean, it's pretty amazing. And it when we turn it off, and we just use the open street maps offline vectors, when we zoom in enough, it'll highlight, I think in blue, here it is. Yeah. So it doesn't show it as strongly right now, but it shows... Ignore that red one. That's just a local trail I've done. So it will now show you the blue route, which is kind of hard to see right now. There it is. And this is a national route that is made by... It's supported by the French Hiking Association of some sort. And it's a GR trail, is what I'm trying to say. So it does show them offline, but it doesn't show you like this when... So anyway, there's, there's that, and that's one of the reasons I use it. And the next thing I should get into is GPX files. So what's really nice is that you can track rides within the OSM map. You don't have to use a secondary app as, as well. And I think it's really, really nice, personally. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I just did one recently around the local area. So we'll just load in that map, and then you can see the whole route like this. Okay? Nice and simple, right? Um, and that's just by tapping in the right hand corner, I can hit record, okay, oops, and then once I'm done, I can then save, I can export, I can view the, the current data. Now to get in to see the data is not very straightforward, I have to admit, and they should improve this in the future. I think you go to the dashboard, like that, dashboard, and then you can view it here. If I'm not mistaken. There we go. Again, there's a steep learning curve on it, but it, it's still worth it if you get past the learning curves. Um, we can see the data for how high I climbed. We can see the speed, the average speed. This was a hike, so it's pretty low average speed. Uh, and then it goes to the next GPX file that I, I also tracked. So personally, I don't really share these routes with people. I, I just keep them on my phone, and then I export them and then later, I should show you this actually right now, just so that you get an, an idea of the context. So for demonstration purposes, I can show you that when I've then recorded all of my routes and my data, I can string it together in another app, which I should, I've already made a video about, I will leave a link, an iCard over here. And once I've strung the data together, I can then track everything and put it in Google My Maps, which is a service like an add-on to using Google Maps. And I think this is a really cool feature. You don't even have to view it like this. You could view the whole KML file. I know this is a lot to take in, but just bear with me. If You can then view the whole map system if you wanted within OpenStreetMaps, but then your phone starts to do all the heavy lifting and it's not done by Google servers. So I don't recommend doing it like that, but you could do it whole, like completely solely from your phone. That is one of the main reasons I use it. And then the, ne the next thing, the next thing to talk about is planning a route. So let's just select this local trail, which is down the road from here. I can then choose hiking. I can choose different parameters. I can go into options. You can use elevation data. You can show it along the route. You can select a GPX file to load in, and you can also simulate the whole nav navigation, which is a re really interesting feature. So I've shorted the, the rough route, and it's, and it's used its own data to map it out, and I then know roughly how far it is from here. It'll, it'll give me the road type, it'll show me elevation data, all of that jazz. It'll show you steepness, road surfacing, it does all of what it can do, as much as it can do, without you needing to be connected to the internet. So that's, that's one of the reasons I like it, and it's very cost-effective, like I said. So 
those are the main things that I use OSMAN for. And I highly recommend downloading the app and fiddling around with it and seeing you can download it for free and test it out yourself. I think if you want something that's heavy rich in data and very low cost, this is one of the best mapping systems in on the whole Play Store. You can also download this whole app on iOS. I can then overlay back the way hiking trails again and it'll show me all of that data again which is really really nice so that's just a quick overview or a quick review of the app i think it's personally amazing definitely have a go and try it out yourself i think it's so heavy in the in the features and for what you pay for and the customizability is is i don't think there's another app really quite like it um again we're going to get into detail about that so definitely have a look at the other video I'm going to talk about these other apps that I use in conjunction with these ones and they sort of complement them because all these apps have different features, you know. But this is the main one I use and one of my favorite ones is OpenStreetMaps and Plus or OSM and Plus. Or, yeah. So definitely have a go. Uh, subscribe for more content. I make lots of different videos about traveling and hiking and cycling, predominantly all from cycling. That's where my knowledge comes from. Have a look at those videos and that's it. Leave comments below for future videos.